In this video, I hope to give you a snippet of Florida and Postal Service history you may not have heard before. If nothing else though, you will get to watch me struggle to complete something men did twice a week for their job. The short version is that in the late 1800s, the Postal Service delivered mail in South Florida by walking down the coast 68 miles to Miami. These barefoot postmen walked the 136 mile round trip weekly. A book was written about them and it made me want to travel this route. Stick around to hear more about these most dedicated mail deliverers. Coming up on my first public beach here. Looks like there's about 50 or 60 people and I'm gonna try to acquire some sunscreen. I hate to bother you guys. Do you have any sunscreen that I can borrow? Thank you very much. I left it right there. Have a great one, guys. I'm currently on a barrier island and I am passing Lake Worth. Lake Worth is between me right now and the mainland. The mainland is North Palm Beach. In just about a mile or so, I'm gonna have to cut in and go around an inlet. There's an inlet into Palm Beach to let boats in and out. Instead of using a canoe like the barefoot mailman would have, I am gonna take the roads around. Coming up on my first obstacle here, we're getting closer to high tide now and the water is running all the way up to the pilings here. So I'm either gonna have to take off my shoes and pass or climb over the pilings. I don't see a way, a way to get up on these pilings here so it looks like I'm gonna be taking my shoes off. Let's see how hard it is to cross this baby. The Barefoot Mailmen were the first U.S. mail carriers between Palm Beach and Miami, Florida. They traveled by foot and by boat between 1885 and 1892, completing the 136-mile round trip once per week. They would travel south for three days and then back north for three days, taking a break on the seventh day. In 1890, the population from the Upper Keys to the St. Lucie River was 726 people. The route was treacherous, including alligator-infested inlet crossings, the potential for robbery by swamp dwellers, and exposure to Florida's ferocious storms. As the name suggests, these mailmen traveled barefoot to avoid sand accumulating in their shoes. You'll see on my shoes, I have covers called gaiters that prevent the sand from getting in my shoes. Originally, I wanted to hike this barefoot, but was afraid of getting cut on glass or stepping on a man -o -war. from the inlet right now. Just came upon a much busier beach. Hey, I made it that last mile and I'm at my cutoff here. So now I'm gonna be going back to land and going over the bridge so I can cross this inlet. This is a pretty busy beach here. Ritz Carlton is to my right and I'm assuming more hotels and stuff are to the left. A lot of people. While it was nice walking in bare feet for a bit, I'm excited to get back on solid ground and get my shoes back on. I was a little nervous I was gonna hurt my feet or something. A lot of man -o wars out today. Let's do some road walking. It's time to get my hat back on or else I'm gonna get sunburned here. Well, I got a bit longer of a walk here than I expected. I'm about to go over a bridge and then looks like this is going to be about a seven mile road walk until I get back to the beach. It'll be a uh, welcome that it's going to be a lot easier to walk on. It's not going to be nearly as pretty as the beach has been. The beach has been, it's an absolutely perfect day out even though it's hard to walk on. I'd rather be on the beach walking than road walking here. 
Let's go see this bridge. There must be a hundred people out here under this bridge scuba diving. I'd love to see under it. A lot of boats out here. Everything from little shanty shacks made of plywood to some 20 and 30 million dollars. I believe the reason that this is here is so that all of these people, all these marinas and everything are here, so that all of these people could get out to the ocean very easily. It's a little safe harbor for them. Speaking of safe harbor, <laughs> that is what this marina is called up here. It actually looks like this island out here is a landfill from what I'm seeing. Across my final bridge before getting back to the beach. This was quite the detour. I've been walking longer on the road than I was on the beach before. It did help me catch up some on my miles per hour. Now that I'm getting down to Palm Beach area, there's some really nice cars around. Lots of Porsches and Mercedes G-Classes. And the bridge is actually going up right now for what I'm assuming is a huge Of champion. It's about 3.15 p.m. right now. Just finished my Cuban. Still drinking my Natalie's Orange Beat here. I'm about a half mile from the beach, quarter mile from the beach. So it's time to start beach walking again. My plan right now is that I have 10 miles to the next Publix. Beach straight walking. Today, I've gone 12.4 miles. If I could get to that Publix by 8 p.m. and be about 22 and a half miles in for the day. I could have dinner, then walk a little bit more and find a little campsite. It will have been dark for a couple hours already by the time I get to that Publix though, so we'll have to feel everything out. It looks like after that Publix, it's all houses, so it's gonna be a lot of not food available. I've got plenty of snacks in my backpack here to last me through the night, but I prefer to have a real dinner. That Cuban was just the right amount of food. I would have gotten a normal whole sub, but I think it was gonna to be too much food for me. Gotta make another crossing. I think I'll stay dry on this one though. Setting, getting to the end of the public beaches here. I'm about 14 miles in for the day. Beautiful evening. These first miles are always the easiest, so I am expecting pain later on. Now it's all open for a while. Nobody's up here. It's just houses along the coast. Sporadic people, but pretty much just walkers. My legs are so tired right now. Holy cow. I feel like if I rest though, it's just gonna make them worse. They're gonna get more sore, so. I'm gonna keep trudging along here. I gotta at least make it to that Publix tonight so I can get some more food later. I don't know what I'm doing through the night yet. Uh, this feels like a whirlwind. I'm just moving now. Ground has been nice and hard for the last half mile, so it's been easy walking. My feet aren't sinking in at all. It's basically like I'm walking on a sidewalk, actually. Getting a little nervous about these clouds up here. I hope it's not raining when I get there. If 
you know what this is for, please leave a comment. I do not know what this thing is for. So I did find out what that was. I asked a lifeguard. It is actually a jetty. There's pipes underground that let water into a pool at this hotel. And then it also lets water back out from the pool so it can kind of circulate the water from the ocean. And uh, he said that metal, even though it was all rusted out, was only about eight years old. And it gives you an idea of how quickly it all rusts out. We are entering the golden hour. Check this out. In the book, the protagonist was gifted Hypoluxo Island by, I believe it was his uncle, his, his past uncle, but there was paperwork showing that he was given this island. One of the main stories of the book was trying to figure out if he actually did own this island. Now, I was hoping to show this island to you, but it looks like it's going to be dark when I'm passing it tonight. It's actually right next to the Publix that I'm going to be at in about two hours. I'm about six and a half miles away from the Publix now. It's going to be dark in about an hour. It's 4.45 right now. So I, it sunsets at around 5.30. I'd say it'll be dark about, yeah, six o'clock. Couldn't ask for a nicer sunset. End of the day. Is this grass real? I gotta see if this grass is real. It's perfect. I've never seen such perfect grass. Go Gators! worried about these clouds here. The water is also kind of making some different moves. It's like the wind is hitting it more. I am very much hoping it doesn't rain on me in the next hour or two. That would stink right before, uh, right before it gets dark. Okay, there's a pier that I can see up about two miles, I would say. I'm gonna have to check the map and see what the name of this pier is but it comes out pretty far into the ocean. It'll be a good landmark for me for the next hour. Not sure if you can see it, it's right, right there. What a sunset. I am truly in a tropical paradise right now. I know I said I was at Lake Worth before, but I believe that was actually the Lake Worth. And it looks like this pier that's coming out in about a mile and a half is near Lake Worth, the city. Uh, Lake Worth is on the land side of it. And then it looks like just south of the pier is called South Palm Beach. And it's so hard to tell distances when you're walking up to stuff for hours if you can see it. But it looks like I'm about a mile or a mile and a half from this pier now. Uh, the sun's almost down, so this GoPro is not gonna be doing me too much good after the sun goes down, but uh, I will fill you in when I get to Publix, I guess. Um, getting a little bit nervous about the evening, trying to figure out what I should do. Uh, about 50% nervous about the police and 50% nervous about some hoodlums running up on me in the dark. So, um, when I'm at Publix, I am gonna be looking at the maps and trying to see what's around of what I'm gonna be walking through the night and just make a call of if it looks safe or not. Just had a cliff bar that had some coffee in it and I'm actually debating on taking some caffeine around nine o'clock and seeing if I could walk through the entire night. Another option is to try and hide up in some bushes somewhere, although it's gonna have to be a really nice spot for me to stay somewhere. Um, I have had a run-in with the police before where they saw me from a helicopter using infrared cameras. So I'm not sure how easy it will be to actually hide in the middle of the night. I just don't want to get a ticket for being on the beach at night. Now, a lot of places you're allowed to be on the beach at night. You're just not allowed to camp. So it might be okay that I'm walking on the beach, but I just can't be camping. Nevertheless, I'm just going to be nice to anybody that I see and hope for the best. There's a full-on party going on at this pier. There's probably about 150 people here still. Oh, here's the water fountains. Nice. I need water. 
can't find an exit to this beach to get out to Publix, so it looks like I'm about to have to do a little trespassing through a hotel here. Well, I had to hop a couple fences there. I'm not proud of it. I don't like trespassing when I don't have to, but it's probably going to be an extra half mile or so of walking if I didn't hop those two fences. Just had to kind of circumnavigate the outside of the hotel and made it to Publix. I am so tired right now. I just had a chicken tender sandwich. Now I'm having this spinach salad and then I'm gonna have a fruit cup. Then I'm gonna go in and fill up my water. Probably both waters. So I'm not sure when I'll have water again. Then I'm gonna go try and get back onto the beach. I'm definitely not gonna go back the way I came. I'll just walk down the road until I find beach access somewhere. It could be a mile, but I think it will be worth not having to go through that hotel again. I can't even get back the way that I came. When I got to the front of that hotel, I, I don't know, I was like in a back area and there was no way to get out. So I had to jump down like a 10 or 12 foot ledge to get out of the hotel. Luckily I didn't hurt myself or my ankles or anything, but it was either doing that or going back the entire way I came and trying to find a new route around. I didn't want to be seen by anybody, even though I probably was. Cops haven't showed up here yet, so I think I'm good. Okay, I'm all fed, got some water. I think I'm ready to start walking again. My legs are hurting pretty bad right now. My feet are hurting, but I can't sleep at this public, so I gotta get a move on at least a little bit. It's only 8 p.m. right now, so I got plenty of time to figure something out. I thought I had seen some big houses on this trip so far. I'm currently passing houses that have armed guards. I know I mentioned Hypoluxo earlier. To my right right now, as I'm heading south, between the current barrier island that I'm on and mainland is Hypoluxo Island. And looking to the right, there are equally large houses over there. I mean, these houses have like two guest houses, they're three stories, they have tunnels as you enter. So I am just keeping it moving. It looks like I can get back onto the beach in about a half mile or so. Just got back onto the beach. It's pretty windy here. I would say we got about 15 or 20 mile an hour winds. One good thing I have to note is that the light from the cities is so bright that I can see perfectly well on the beach here. So I don't have to worry about being snuck up on by anybody. I will be keeping my head on a swivel though to look behind me. There's houses for the next 10 miles, 15 miles or so. So I don't have to worry for a while now about being on a state park or an area where I'm really not supposed to be walking at night. I just don't think I'm allowed to camp here. I'm crossing the Boynton Inlet right now. It's a pretty small inlet here, probably about 50 feet wide. And there's still a bunch of people here, like 20 people. So I'm gonna be a little bit careful as I go back onto the beach now. 11 p.m. and I got just a tiny hint of light from this ridiculous Christmas tree display. I am 27 miles in for the day right now. I'm just gonna keep walking until I can't, I think. I think my plan is gonna be to pass out around 3 or 4 a.m., sleep until the sun comes up, and then I'll keep walking. It's 1 a.m. right now, and I just got splashed by the water. It came up and soaked my left shoe. So, I'm shooting for a spot where I want to uh, set up a mini camp in about four or five miles here, but if I find one before then, I'm gonna take it. I'm pretty tired at this point. I don't see anything in the next mile, but the lights from the city make it so bright that I can pretty much see very far ahead of me, like at least 500 feet on the beach at all times and a mile up on the condos and houses. I can see plenty far up and there's nowhere I can stay soon, but I wanna take these shoes off and get them dried out before I keep walking too much further. I can't walk barefoot right now because there's so many man of wars They're pretty much every few steps and sometimes I step on them and it scares me because when they pop, it's so loud. man -o wars or the Portuguese man -o war looks similar to jellyfish but it's actually a siphonophore. Siphonophores are interesting because they're made up of a colony of genetically identical individuals that have various forms and functions. While the balloon section may raise up to six inches out of the water, their tails average 30 feet and can grow up to 100 feet. These tails are used to paralyze and eat small prey. And similar to jellyfish, they pack a sting if you touch them. And another reason I wanna get my shoes off is I have a pretty bad blister starting on my left pinky toe. 
pretty sure it's raw at this point. When I take my shoes off, I'll bandage it up and, or I'll let it dry out first and then bandage it up. Okay, it is 2.15 in the morning and I made it to my final stop for the night. Just set up a little camp here. I would show you around, but uh, there's some people that are about a thousand feet back north. So I don't really want to uh, be shining the light too much. I thought I had made it to another spot. It turned out that there was a couple people that were still sitting there and there was a road right there. So I just didn't want them to see where I was gonna camp. Not that they would do anything, but couldn't quite get a read on them. So I decided to go another thousand. 2,000 feet past them. Hopefully they don't see me and mess with me, but sleeping on my backpack here, it's not like they can really steal anything from me. It's like they came up with a knife or something. I'll try to get a few hours of shed eye. It's pretty windy still, so I think it'll be more like resting and not walking than actual shed eye. The barefoot mailman would sleep in palmetto shacks as well as the houses of refuge. These houses provided safety for sailors and shipwreck victims along Florida's shores. Although there were 10 on the east coast of Florida at their peak, only one remains in Stewart, Florida. The first barefoot mailman, Edward Bradley, won the postal contract with the federal government and was paid $600 per year. I don't think I slept at all in the last two hours. It's 4.15 in the morning. I'm gonna walk a little bit up to a park here and try and get some water. And then I think I'm gonna go try and sleep under one of those umbrella gazebo chair things that are on the beach because it's just way too windy out here. I'm not gonna get any sleep in this wind. <laughs> It is 6.15 a.m. and I am crossing the Boca Raton Inlet right now. Sunrise is at 7.15, so should start to see first light pretty soon here. I had to leave the beach to get over here, and I've learned that it's uh, it can be quite a pain to make that happen. I had to go through another hotel again. And I'm crossing the inlet. Made it across the inlet, and we got first light, although the clouds are kind of blocking the sun. I gotta admit I'm cheating a little bit right now. I'm walking the last two miles to breakfast. My legs were just hurting really bad and I don't have any food left, so I wanna get there as fast as possible. Probably rest there for a bit. I'm so tired at this point. I don't know if I can make it the next two miles without having to sleep some. I might have to go onto one of these empty lots and set up behind a tree. I'm so hungry too, that's a dilemma. The road walking is probably twice as easy. It's not twice as fast but it's twice as easy on the legs as walking on that beach, even though the beach wasn't too bad in the spot I was in. I am coming up to the Hillsboro Inlet right now, and this is where James Hamilton either drowned or was eaten by alligators while he was trying to cross the inlet. I, I just walked on the street for a bit. This place is just all $20 million homes and 50-foot yachts, and, and some of these people are just buying the lots to put golf courses on. I'm interested to see how big this inlet is to see if it, like how he actually had so much trouble crossing it. The story goes that a stranger had taken the canoe that James usually used to the other bank. He was trying to swim to the other bank so that he could bring it back and then bring his mail over. And while he was swimming across, something happened and he was never seen again. This is a statue of the barefoot mailman traveling. It looks like I missed the big barefoot mailman statue a couple miles back, so that's too bad. This is what I've been looking for to sleep in. 
somebody's watching him, I would have to rent it, I think. and a half miles in today and I just ran into a whole bunch of beach restaurants so I think I'm gonna stop somewhere and get some food. This place is absolutely packed. There's got to be 500 people here eating at all these different restaurants. There's probably about 10 restaurants. While it's not a super sunny day, that is welcome in my book because I don't want to get sunburned. <laughs> well, everything was pretty packed there and it was also pretty expensive, talking like $15 burgers. There's a beach food store about a mile south and that's what I'm gonna head for now. Well, Apple Maps just failed me for the second time today. The ocean food store is closed. I just walked 30 minutes to get here. Now, it's not out of my way at all, but I am disappointed that I'm not gonna be able to get to eat right now. Looks like the next grocery store, it's another type of beach food store. I looked it up on Google Maps though, is open till midnight and it's like two and a half miles south. I'm gonna head there after I take a little break. I ate like two full meals at around 10 a.m. I have some snacks, so I could probably go till dinner without eating again and just get a bunch of food at the ocean food store. I found lunch. I decided to take the bus because it saved me about four hours of road walking. I was gonna have to walk all the way around the Fort Lauderdale airport, and that bus that I just took went directly through the airport, and it was only about a 15 minute ride. It's gonna basically buy me a couple more, multiple hours of sleep tonight. What I'm about to be facing tomorrow is basically everything from where I am south, but, if I go half a mile north on the beach when I get there, it will bring me to the Don Mizell Eula Park. I made it to the Dr. Von, there's like six words. Dr. Von Mizell, I will say, State Park. This is where I'm gonna be camping tonight. I think it is technically illegal to camp here, but I am pretty deep in this place. That being said, it is pretty early in the evening still, so I would not be surprised if somebody comes by and tries to check on it. I don't really mind getting kicked out. I really just don't wanna get a fine for like $180 or something for camping in the state park with that you're not supposed to. This place is right in the flight path of Fort Lauderdale Airport, so you can probably hear that plane come, going by in the background. That's gonna be pretty constant all night. Now my plan is to stay here until about midnight, one or two a.m., until it starts raining constantly. There's a 50% chance of rain between 12 and 6 a.m. that entire time, so definitely gonna get some rain at some point. I think I have about 25 miles to do tomorrow, so I wanna get started early. One interesting thing that I've noticed on this walk is that I'll get, I, I go through waves of tiredness. I'll be in a slump where I can barely go a half mile without really wanting to stop, and then I'll eat some food and drink some water or get some electrolytes and I'll be able to go four or five miles without stopping on the beach. I need to learn more about myself and how I'm able to regulate my tiredness when I'm doing these really long hikes. Since yesterday morning, I've gotten about one hour of sleep total, so I am really looking forward to getting some sleep tonight, hopefully for at least three or four hours. I think that'll be enough for me to push through. Going back to the tiredness thing, I noticed that even uh, even the one hour nap that I took at 10 a.m. was plenty of energy boost for me 
to go again for another five hours of hiking. It is right around midnight right now, and I think I got about three, three and a half hours of sleep. I just got packed up, and I'm about to start heading south. It's gonna be a long walk, but the walking is easier in the dark. I just hope it's safe. It is 1 a.m., and I just made it to Hollywood Beach. It's entirely empty here. It makes for much easier walking than walking on the actual sand. Been here once, like probably over 10 years ago now. I love these beach towns that have walking right on the beach and there's restaurants and people can go skating. I'm a little surprised, but there's actually been about a couple dozen people so far that I've passed, just in groups of three to five who are enjoying their Sunday evening before Monday. I don't know, I guess they don't work or something. It's all been people kind of my age. I wish I could see it during the daytime to see everything open again. After about 45 minutes of walking, I am coming to the end of the Broadwalk. I found out that it's called the Broadwalk, not the Boardwalk. And from here, I think I probably have about 18 miles left to get to South Point, Miami Beach. I am coming up to the Bay of Biscayne right now in the next couple hundred yards. For the last hour or so, it's been raining, uh, moderately raining, I would say but I have a pack cover and a rain jacket and I was wearing my hat. My shorts are all soaked and my shoes are all soaked, but my shirt and my body is dry and I'm staying warm. It's about 75 out, so you can't really get too cold with it anyways. I am crossing the bay right now. It's pretty busy already this morning, car wise. Definitely tell I'm in Miami now. The view on the other side looks really pretty, but it's still too dark out to show on camera. This is Surfside Beach, and surprisingly, it's all empty this morning. I guess it is a Monday morning. Yeah, I thought some people would be walking around here. And this is the start of the final leg of my trip. There's no more inlets I gotta cross, no more road walking. I'm gonna get to South Point in probably eight miles, I would guess, of beach walking. I actually might get off and have some breakfast somewhere, but we'll see. I kinda just wanna finish. The last few miles have been the hardest of the entire trip. I was walking over on the beach, but the sun was like reflecting off the sand and burning me. So I walked over to this like walking path that was parallel to the beach and it, there was no wind and it had to be like over a hundred degrees, or at least it felt like it. So now I'm walking through the city. It's cooler because I'm in the shade, but it's very intense. I'm having like culture shock even after two days of being out of the city. Right now I'm coming up to 5th Street and I am headed to 1st Street and then South Point. At this point, my pain level is at like a six and a half. I've been taking breaks every half mile just to let my feet rest. 2nd Street, made it to 1st Street. I just got to the top of a hill and I can see the ending here. Made it to the South Point. I would give a recap of this trip right now, but I am so tired. I'm just gonna have to record something later. Here's the view. I think I ended up walking about 80 miles on this trip, so I should have covered north of where the mailman started and south of where he ended. So hopefully I got the whole thing in. This trail has gained local notoriety through statues, murals, and the book The Barefoot Mailman by Theodore Pratt. The book tells the story of one of the mailmen, James Hamilton, who died mysteriously, although it is presumed from alligators while swimming across Hillsborough Inlet. The book merges multiple experiences from the era and is more a work of historical fiction than a retelling of concrete events. 
Nowadays, the coast is lined with McMansions and public beaches. While Boy Scouts walk a 35 mile portion of the route annually, I couldn't find anyone who has recently walked the entire route. After reading the book, it didn't take much time for my imagination to be peaked enough to want to walk it myself. You see, I grew up visiting these beaches on weekends, and there is just something about looking east and watching the sun come over the horizon that I love so much.